All right, so this is going to be a little bit different than what I've been doing. I am going to, I, I wanted to play around with Ken Q a little bit before I uh, downloaded my my files from Firebrand, so or whatever the heck it's called, where I have all of my data um, <clears throat> for my online Q study. So here, I am at the Ken Q analysis web application page. <clears throat> Right, and I'm using Chrome. There's a whole reference manual. I'm not good at at reading instructions generally. So here are a couple of ways to have our data input. And so I thought it would be interesting to play around a little bit first and just go into PQ method and just put in some old files, old data files. So here I don't even remember. Um, Maybe I could find one where I I remember what the output was. Oh no, I mm, uh, well I know I know exactly how this one ended up my ITL. So I'm going to take my .dat .dat file and I'm going to drag it here, and then I'm going to take my statement file, the STA file. And I'm going to drag it here. And <clears throat> literally, it is that stinking easy. So there's all my stuff, right? All in my web browser. Right? <clears throat> and there's all my participants. And now I can just simply click on Begin Analysis. And there it is, my correlation ma matrix. Whammo, bammo. <clears throat> And this is respondents and respondents, so that's very interesting. Right? <clears throat> so, you know, the correlation among our participants. <clears throat> and now I can come over here and I can do factor extraction. I could do centroid or right <clears throat> principal components. I am going to do centroid and I'm just gonna try I'll try three. <clears throat> And then I just click on centroid factors. Boop, there they are. So there are my factors unrotated and some other fun stuff. And here is actually, it's amazing is that actually the scree plot actually matches pretty much the outcome of this study as I remember it. <clears throat> so scree plot, right, has to do with the slope. So here I have one continuous slope. And then, boop, another one. So this tells me that I should have a two-factor solution, you know, based on all my R-factor analysis training. And so how many factors do I want to keep? One, two, or three? Well, based on the screen plot, I could say two, but I'll just say three for no great chucks for anything. And I'm just going to say judgmental. <clears throat> and now I can display my... Oops, I have this. We'll pick one and two. Display my factors. <clears throat> now it's not quite as touchy, right? <clears throat> but here I have noticed that I have pretty much everybody so far looks like they are all on factor one, which is pretty much how that worked out for this study. And here's number 19, <clears throat> way over here. <clears throat> Um, kind of dirty, as we say in R, right? 19 between factor one and factor two. And if I wanted to, I could I could rotate this. <clears throat> right, so I could rotate it. So say I'm going to say five degrees, and I'm going to do counterclockwise. Right? And then, boop, there it is, exactly what it looks like as far as the factor loadings. So that is a very cool thing regarding Ken Q because I can literally see things as they evolve. And now it looks like this guy is probably probably a little more on factor one. This particular solution, um, I had a two factor solution where everybody really liked the reading circles, except for one person, she was kind of crabby. 
I can also do much larger, right? So in here I could do clockwise. <clears throat> and see where this guy ends up. He's a little, whoops, little bit more over here now. <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could maybe do a little more. <clears throat> see, I just want to tweak it a little bit. And I can just keep doing it by one. <clears throat> and see exactly how it turns out here. So now it looks like he's a little bit more actually on three, right? <clears throat> Notice that, right, they're all in three-dimensional space. That's how changing, right, actually changed three. So <clears throat> I could save rotation. I, I'm just kind of messing about at this point. And whoops, where did I go? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> and I, if I wanted to, I could, I could rotate some more, but we won't worry about that. Can I? All right. So here are my factor loadings. I can auto flag. And if I do that, where's our little nineteen friend? Oh, he's not on anything. Right. <clears throat> you notice that here. Right, he's kind of dirty loaded here on on two and three. <clears throat> so let's go back over to rotating our factors and I'm gonna do a judgmental and I'm gonna do this time I'm gonna do two and three. I'm gonna display them. <clears throat> and really, right, what I'm interested in is number nineteen here. <clears throat> and there's number nineteen. Right, a lot easier to see than on PQ method. <clears throat> right now he's, let's see, he's negative on both. So I'm just going to play around a little bit and right, I'll do 10 and I'll do counterclockwise and then counterclockwise. And we'll see how we we're looking here. Oh, there's 19. Certainly looks a lot more like he's on factor three now. And can I, oops. Oh, I don't want to do that. Number. Oh, look at That's fun. <clears throat> so I can do some rank ordering. Um, let's see. Um, we'll save this rotation trying to figure out how I can invert a factor. But maybe we'll, we'll come over here. So I'm going to do auto flag. <clears throat> right? I can also right, do some row, fancy road things. But there's my number 19 guy. Oh, I can split a bipolar factor. How sweet is this? I can invert a factor. And so I want to invert factor three and submit. Now it's much easier to interpret, of course, because it's a positive loading. <clears throat> and now I can come down here, <clears throat> right? This is my ITL reading circles, right? And now I can generate my, my output. And then just simply scroll down. <clears throat> right, and I want my output to be one and three. Flag loading was selected. Got it. Oh. I thought that was number three was my, yeah, it was number three. Oh, I didn't, oh, that's why. I forgot to auto flag. Ah, no wonder. Never mind. All right, so got to flag them, you know. All right, now I can do generate output. <clears throat> I want to keep one and three. Submit. Oh, sure. Oh, I can do yes or no. <clears throat> and now I can download my complete output <clears throat> um, as a, this is just an Excel file that's not comma delimited. Excel file, right? So. Oh, who doesn't want an Excel file? I love 
beautiful Excel file. So there it is, right? It's just going to be downloaded. I'm just going to download it right onto my desktop, which is already kind of cloudy, crowded. So, all right. And so now I can come over here and open my Ken Q. Here's my project overview. Here are my statements. Here are all my Q sorts. Here's my correlation matrix. Here's my unrotated, right? <clears throat> there is my cumulative communalities matrix. There's my factor loadings, right? And now it just says flagged. Isn't that nice? <clears throat> I got my free distribution, which shows everybody was very good about sorting according to that. And look at this. Is this not beautiful? it is right my factor scores i don't have to copy from a text file right my outcome and copy and paste it's all boop right here and in fact if i hadn't used pq method i would be able to have the entire statement opposed to the truncated statement which is a hangover from the fact that the pq method is a dos file my factor correlations my factor weights, there are my factor one sorts correlations, right, factor three. So you can just see, right, this is so beautiful. There is my factor scores just for factor three and in order. <clears throat> there's the differences, there's my consensus and agreement, factor characteristics, standard error, and <clears throat> distinguishing statements. Whoopsie. <clears throat> so isn't this very nice? So here is my list of distinguishing statements. <clears throat> right? I only have distinguishing statements for factor one, of course, because we, we only have two factors. There it might distinguish, oh, no, but does distinguishing factors or statements for both of them even though there's only two, which PQ method doesn't do. Here are my consensus statements. There's the ranks. There's the factor three ranks. So this is super, super sweet. So I am actually pretty stinking excited about this. Next up, I'm going to make a, a similar video, but I'm going to download all of my data as a JSON file and analyze it in this same web page because I can simply go up right <clears throat> here to the very beginning right and there's easy HTML Q right and so I have to have a text statement with my or text file with all of my statements and then over here I'm going to upload my right <clears throat> easy HTML Q file so I'm going to have to figure out, oh, this looks like it's, uh, well, I'm just going to have to figure that out. But for right now, I'm pretty stinking excited about analyzing my PQ method data in, in KenQ.